In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install and configure and use Anaconda. Anaconda is a package that includes various Python language interpreters, uh, integrated development environments, editors, libraries, and so forth. It will contain almost everything that we need for any of our Python-based courses uh, this fall. So to install Anaconda, we're going to go to anaconda.com slash download, all right? Uh, I don't know if you can read that, um, but it is anaconda.com slash download. And hit the enter key. And here we are, Anaconda distribution free download. Um, I am using a Windows 10 machine, and so I'm going to be doing the Windows download. If you are using a Mac, you'll want to get the Mac installer. The procedure will be fairly similar to what I'm going to be doing here with Windows 10. Uh, if, by some chance, you are a Linux fan and have a Linux system, you can also install Anaconda on Linux. All right, so I'm going to click download, and that will download the setup program into my downloads directory. Now, I happen to be using Chrome as my browser, so on Chrome, I get this little uh, message in the lower left corner. Uh, about the file that is being downloaded. When the icon here on the left of the file name stops spinning and flashing, that means that the downloading has, has uh, completed. So let me show that in my folder. And here we are. So this is the startup program for Windows for Anaconda 3. 2023.03. In other words, this was released in March of 2023. I will start this up by double clicking, and it takes a few seconds to decide to come up. I will be clipping out some waiting time while we're waiting for things to happen here. Okay, so. Uh, welcome to Anaconda 2021, 20, I'm sorry, 2023.03. Uh, I'm going to click next. We need to agree to the license agreement. You can read it if you wish. I'm going to click I agree. Uh, I want to install it for just me, so I'll click next again. And the folder in which Anaconda is going to be installed by default for me is users J Ostland Anaconda 3. I'm fine with that, so I'll click next. It asks me if I want to create start menu shortcuts. I do, so I'll leave that checked. Uh, add Anaconda 3 to my path. This is not recommended. I'll leave that unchecked. Register Anaconda 3 as my default Python 3.10. Yes, I want that to be true, so I'll leave that checked. Clear the package cache upon completion. Uh, recommended recover some disk space without harming functionality, so I will go ahead and click that as well. And install. And installing is going to take some time. I'll be clipping out quite a bit of time from this waiting. Okay, so we have finally gotten to completed. Uh, for me, that took a handful of minutes. Uh, I will click Next to continue. And everything you love about Anaconda, now available from the cloud. Uh, I don't want to use the cloud. I'm not... Uh, I, I want to be able to use this even if my network connection is bad, so let me just click Next. 
and completing Anaconda setup. Here are some helpful tips and resources. Uh, this will display uh, information about Anaconda and about getting uh, about working with Anaconda. I don't personally want to see that information. You're welcome to read it if you wish. I'm going to uncheck both of these. Welcome to Anaconda and getting started with Anaconda. And click Finish. And it is done. Amazing. Okay, so Anaconda has now been installed. Let me go to my Start menu and we'll see what uh, programs I have available as part of Anaconda. Uh, open my Start menu and my recently added Anaconda stuff is at the top. I will expand that list. Uh, in here, the things I care about are the Anaconda prompt, which will give me an ordinary uh, command.com kind of prompt that I can execute command line oriented uh, Python stuff from. Also, Spider, which is a very nice integrated development environment that I uh, recommend that you uh, use, although there are others that you might use instead. And Anaconda Navigator, uh, which simply gives you a screen of uh, buttons that you can click on, uh, icons that you can click on to launch various applications. Now on a Mac, in particular, Anaconda Navigator is the most convenient way of getting to various things. So let me start out by running Anaconda Navigator. This will take a few seconds to get going. It kind of <laughs> flickers uh, various things on the screen. Chug, chug, chug. Okay, and finally, uh, here we have the Anaconda Navigator, which gives me uh, buttons I can click on to mostly to launch uh, various applications that were installed as part of uh, Anaconda. Uh, for example, I can get a command.exe prompt, uh, which is a, a command line oriented prompt by clicking this launch button. And it's just an ordinary uh, shell style command.com uh, command line window. The uh, base uh, over here at the left gives me a visual clue that this is a shell, uh, a command.com uh, window that is aware of my Anaconda uh, installation. I'm going to go ahead and just close that window. Uh, I can also run Spider by clicking Launch under Spider. And this is going to take a little while to come up, but let me go ahead and do it. OK, Launch Spider. And OK, so this is the Spider uh, graphical user interface. Let me uh, close this as well because I want, in Windows, I want to return to my Start menu and configure things so that I can conveniently launch my uh, Command Prompt window and my Spider application from the Start menu uh, rather than from the Navigator. So the Navigator is very convenient for the Mac. As I said, it's kind of unnecessary for uh, Windows. Let me close the Navigator. Quit Navigator, yes. And now let me go back to my Start menu and expand the choices. I want my Anaconda prompt and my Spider to be easy to launch. So I am going to 
right click on Anaconda Prompt and add that to my uh, start menu. So pin to start and I'll put that up here. All right, so now I can conveniently run my Anaconda Prompt using this button. I want to do the same thing for Spider. I'll point at Spider and right click and say pin to start and move that up also. So now I've got these conveniently in my uh, start menu where it's easy for me to launch them. Uh, in fact, I want to make it even easier for myself, so I'm going to uh, once again point at Anaconda Prompt and I'll right click and, and use more to pin the Anaconda Prompt window to my taskbar as well. Okay, so you can see that that's now shown up over on my taskbar. Same thing for Spider. Right click, more, pin to taskbar. Okay, and so now I don't have to fuss with my start menu at all. I can just launch the command prompt and launch Spider directly from my uh, taskbar. Okay, now let me launch the uh, command prompt. I'm going to click on my taskbar uh, Anaconda prompt uh, icon. And the uh, Anaconda prompt looks very much like the command.com uh, command line interface. But this window, it has all of the uh, configuration information for uh, working with Python and Anaconda. The very simplest integrated development environment available for Python uh, is something called IDLE, I-D-L-E, which I can execute at this command prompt. Now, actually, uh, I don't want to be in users JOSTLIN for this. Let me make a directory called uh, Python code. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so evidently I had created that directory in the past. Let me instead, uh, I'll just create something called uh, my code. There we go. And I'm going to change directory into my code. And if I use the dir command to display a directory listing, I see that Currently, there's nothing in here. And now within here, I'm going to run, within my code, I'm going to run idle. Let me warn you, if you're using a Mac and if you start your uh, terminal, then idle uh, may not work. It may launch an older version of Python, Python 2. Uh, if that's the case, close your idle and try running idle 3 instead. As another warning for Mac users, in some past releases of Anaconda, the idle integrated development environment will actually crash your machine. Uh, it shouldn't really be possible for an ordinary application to crash your Mac operating system, but uh, but it seems to it seems to happen. So so you may want to just observe me using idle and uh, and instead just use Spider instead. All right, so I'm going to use idle here on Windows, and here we go. Here is my initial idle uh, window. This is also a command line oriented window. I'm executing Python 3.10 uh, subversion 9 in here. And the three less than symbols on the left edge here are the prompt waiting for me to type some Python code. I'm going to do something really trivial. I'm going to create a variable called a. And I'm going to make a refer to the value 1234. So A gets 1234. I like to pronounce the the single equal sign here as gets. So this variable A is going to get or refer to the integer value 100, sorry, 1234. And I have now created a, a variable A containing or referring to that value. 
in the shell, I can see the value that a variable refers to by just typing the name of that variable. So now if I type A and hit the Enter key, I get told that A refers to the value 1234. If a variable doesn't exist and I type its name, I have not created a variable called B. I just get this error message telling me that the name B uh, has not been defined. Okay, so <laughs> that's enough to know about idle uh, for now. Um, actually, let me show you. Uh, so, so here I'm just typing uh, Python code one statement at a time, uh, and I'm seeing results uh, when I request to see uh, like the value of a variable. I can't save anything that I'm doing in this interactive uh, prompt environment. I need to create a file to contain source code. Let me say file, new file, and this is an editor. And here I can type code that I can save for later reuse. So let me here say a gets 1234 here if I just say a nothing happens because this file part of idle is basically just a, like a text editor uh, and I can type in Python code that I can later execute now you may notice you may not be able to see this I, I hope you can but it says that this file is untitled I'm going to have to say file, save as, and give this thing a file name. I'm going to say uh, prog1, and the idle editor will automatically add a .py extension to that file. So I say prog1 and click save. And now my file has been saved with the name prog1.py. I can execute this code. Let me scoot my Python, Python idle shell over to the left a bit. And uh, move my code editing file to the right. So now I've got these things side by side. I can execute this code that I have saved in prog1.py by clicking run and run module. The contents of that code file is handed over to the interactive shell. Notice I get this message saying that the shell has been restarted, but I don't see any output. It turns out that in a program, if, as a statement, you just give the name of a variable, that does not cause anything to actually uh, occur. So if I want to see the value of this variable a in my program, I need to say print a. Print is a predefined function uh, in Python uh, 3. And if I, when I say print a, the value of the variable a is going to be displayed. You may notice that there's a star, an asterisk, next to my file name up here at the top of my editing window. I'm going to need to say file save to resave that uh, prog1.py file. And now when I say run, run, as I said, this code file is handed off to the interactive shell the interactive shell executes the statements contained in the code file. The first statement creates the variable a and causes a to refer to the value 1234. And the second statement, this print statement, causes the value of a to be displayed. Okay, now this interface, this interactive shell and the uh, file editor tool, uh, which is uh, 
basically like Notepad, except that it's familiar with Python uh, language syntax. Uh, this is a pretty pathetic uh, kind of interface for you to be using. I like to use it in my lectures because it is extremely plain. Uh, there are no fancy symbols, no fancy icons, not much uh, clutter on the screen. And consequently, I will be using uh, Idle in a lot of my lectures. But you will be much better off using Spider instead. So let me demonstrate Spider for you now. I'm going to close my editor window. I'm going to close my shell window. And let's go down now to the Spider taskbar icon and start it running again. Okay, now in Spider, uh, the Spider screen is divided into parts. This lower right-hand part is equivalent to the interactive shell window, uh, except instead of having the three greater than symbols as a prompt, um, what you see here is the, the word in with a, a statement number uh, in green uh, waiting for you to, to do something. Here I'm going to say, uh, let me just switch variable names just so that we can see that things work with different variables. So I'm going to say uh, C, the variable C, gets the value 321. All right, now the interactive shell is waiting for me to type my second statement, and this time I'm going to type C, the name of this variable, ah, spider 5.4.3 is available. Uh, okay, so if you get this message, uh, you can go ahead and do an upgrade. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to close this message. All right. Uh, I've typed C in my interactive shell. When I hit the enter key, I get this out prompt. This is my... Uh, output from my second statement, uh, which is the value of C, which is 321. And if I try to access a variable that doesn't exist, like D in this case, I get told uh, name D is not defined. Okay, so the lower right-hand side here is the interactive shell, uh, and it behaves similarly to the idle shell. Uh, it's a little more convenient and a little better, a uh, little nicer looking user interface. The left side, this is where your text editor uh, is found. So when you run Spider, you have both a console window in the lower right side and an editor window in the left side uh, automatically. Now, I do want to point out that I can go up to Tools, Preferences, and one of the things I can do under Appearance is I can change the size of the font. I mean, you can see that there's oodles of things here that you can uh, configure. Let me increase my font size to uh, 24, and I'll click OK. Okay, and that just makes everything larger, so with any luck, that will be easier for you to uh, read when you're watching this video. Okay, now, uh, Spider will, by default, throw in this comment, any... Uh, any line in a Python code file that starts with a pound sign or sharp sign uh, is a comment. And this comment is simply indicating to us that this is a uh, UTF-8 uh, character set uh, file, which for our purposes in, in the U.S., basically UTF contains the ASCII uh, character set. The uh, So ASCII in 
case you care. <laughs> ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Um, and the ASCII character set is basically the characters that you see uh, on an American-style uh, keyboard. Okay, so that's that first line is just a comment, which Spider fills in with the character set that's being used. Uh, you can erase that comment, and it's completely harmless to do that. Uh, whoops, I erased a little too much. This next chunk of code in green, this is what's called a multi-line string. Um, any characters contained between two pairs of triple double quotes is a string that can be multiple lines long. And so here Spider is just telling me, um, hey, uh, this is the Spider editor, and this is a temporary script file. Uh, not only can I erase the comment telling me the character set, but I can also erase that string telling me that I'm in the editor, because I already know I'm in the editor, or at least I do now. You may or may not be able to see that uh, I have a default file name up here of temp.py. I want to change that to something else. So let me say file, save as, and Spider has decided to create this directory called .spider-py3 uh, under my... Uh, J. Oslin directory. I definitely don't want to do stuff in there. So let me go up a level to my regular directory, and then I'm going to come down to this my code subdirectory. Uh, here is the prog1.py file that I created using idle. I'm going to create a spyprog1.py. Uh, I can type the extension, or I can just let the spider editor add it for me. Okay, and so this is now the file spyprog1.py. And in here I will do the same kind of thing that we did in idle. Just, you know, just to make clear that everything is, you know, that these environments are distinct from each other, I'm going to use yet, yet other variable names. So let me say g gets uh, 4567 print g and now when I say file save and run run uh, run with the default configuration yes I want to run with the default configuration so I'm going to click run and as we saw with idle what happens is that this program code file gets handed off to the interactive shell uh, using this internal mechanism in Spider called the, the run file. Um, and I see the output from print of G. All right, so there's enormously more to know about uh, both Spider and Idle. Uh, I think you will be much happier with Spider, Spider than with Idle. Uh, but that... Uh, is sufficient for uh, getting you into and out of these these things. So let me close Spider as well. Okay, so that that concludes our introduction to uh, downloading and installing Anaconda. Uh, I of course was doing this on a Windows machine. We took a look at the Anaconda Navigator, which gives you uh, icons and launch buttons that you can click on to start various things. On a Mac, that's a very useful way to uh, to interact with uh, applications. On a Windows machine, it's a little bit less uh, important. Uh, we also took a look at Idle, this very simple, very plain, and frankly uh, clumsy uh, mechanism for writing code and executing uh, Python code. And also Spider, which is a much more full-featured, uh, much more convenient uh, tool that runs both on Windows and Mac. 
that allows you to see both your uh, interactive shell and the file that you're editing uh, all on the same screen. Uh, as I said, I tend to use Idle for my lectures just because it's so plain, but you will probably be much happier using uh, Spider instead.